<laughs> there you go. Got to the flies, wind picked up, had the reef, and sailed through. The mighty scamp. Welcome to episode 6 of Small Craft Tasmania. In this episode, we're taking Sea Dog, our scamp, for a trip around Bruni Island. Day 1, today, we're going from Tinderbox around to Adventure Bay. Day 2, we'll be heading from Adventure Bay around the bottom of Bruni, through the Fries, and up into Partridge Narrows. Day 3, we're going to be heading up the channel, back up to Tinderbox. So day 1 is about 21 nautical miles. Day 2 is about 30 nautical miles. Day 3 is about 23 nautical miles. So today we've got a northeasterly, which should mean favourable conditions all the way down to Adventure Bay. Day 2, we're going to have lighter winds, which should mean favourable conditions to take us around the bottom of Bruni Island. Day 3 is not looking as promising. We are expecting gusts up to around 30 knots. They will be from the south and the west. It'll mean we have a fast trip back up to Tinderbox. Here we go. Leaving tinderbox behind. Down the channel. Bruni Island. See the iron pot in the distance. And just around this corner is Storm Bay. And you're probably wondering why it got its name. Have a guess. Being followed by a cat again. Same place. Christmas turkey and pickle sandwiches. Come on. Now, Christmas turkey because it's Boxing Day today. Boxing Day not only is special because I don't even know what. Why, why is Boxing? Why? Why is Boxing Day called Boxing Day? Anyway, Boxing Day is the day that the Sydney to Hobart race starts midday today, so that's in a couple of hours, and in a couple of days the Maxis. The Super Maxis, the biggest boats of the fleet, will be coming around there, up here, and around Ironpot, which is the last marker before they head up the River Derwent. Those boats will have sailed from Sydney to here in the time that it takes me to get from Tinderbox <laughs> to Adventure Bay, and it's just a little bit further, maybe down to the bottom of Bruni. Fun fact. Now is that we've been sailing for 56 minutes. We've done about three and a half nautical miles. We're doing about 3.8 knots at the moment. Maximum speed's only been about four and a half. I need to, I need to average about three and a half to four and a half to get this done in the time frame that I need. Uh, the wind's picked up a little bit. Yeah, so about four and a half to five knots. Now, right in front of us is, uh, this is Cape Queen Elizabeth here. Down there, that's Fluted Cape. Into here is Adventure Bay. Just around the, the corner here, we've got the Neck Beach. So I'll show you where we are. We're just coming around here now. We'll head straight into Adventure Bay. Okay, so we've been at sea now for five and a quarter hours and 21.3 nautical miles. Here we are in Adventure Bay. This is a place called East Cove. East Cove is just up in here. I've set the tent up just to keep the wind and the sun off. Tucker time. I'm having brown rice, quinoa, beans and tuna. Cold salad. It's too hot to cook anything. Good tucker. The sun's just gone down. It's 8.30. Bed set up. 
Sleep with the tent open tonight, I think. Nighty night. See you in the morning. Coffee time. Goodness, the wind picked up. I don't know if I could tolerate that engine much more. Now, it's still pretty lumpy out here, as you can see. Um, we're uh, moving along at about three and a half, four knots at the moment. Wind's coming out of the west. I'm expecting it to swing around to the east in the next hour or so. Every now and then, there's a wave that comes through that makes you remember that you're in a small boat. So we're about halfway between Fluted Cape here and the fries which are just around that corner there sea settled down a little bit we've come a little bit further offshore so we don't have that bounce back just to give you an idea of this sea state there's a big catch coming towards me and you can see how much he's rocking around just behind him that's boreal head and to the left of that you can see the fries and tasman heads just around the corner we're almost at the very bottom. Probably wondering what the heck a little boat like this is doing down here. That's the type of boat that you go down here in. Mind you, I'm very impressed with the scamp on this trip. So far, touch wood, nothing's gone wrong. I haven't even had a drip of water on me. <laughs> Jeez, I hope he can see me. That's Julian. <laughs> oh, I know who that is. Coming up to the fries now. And let me tell you that it's not been easy. The swell is all over the place. <clears throat> I've got the swell coming from the south. There's a swell coming from the west. Swell coming from the east. And the wind's coming from the north. There we go. Every now and then I get these gusts. We're doing about five and a half, six and a half knots at the moment. <clears throat> Which is good. I want to get through here as quickly as I can. I was just thinking that this is probably the smallest boat to ever come through here. Certainly the smallest boat under sail. Maybe there's been some tinnies through here. So this scamp. This boat's 11 foot and 11 inches long. Over there, that's Cape Bruni. You can see the Cape Bruni lighthouse. That's where we're headed. And I might actually reef. Yeah, I just put a reef in. The wind was picking up a little bit. <clears throat> Better be safe than sorry. Yeah. Now the wind's 
worth picking up. That's yeah, more fun. There you go. Got to the fries, went and picked up, had the reef, and sailed through. The mighty scamp. Look at that chop, it's all over the place. Woohoo! Yeah, baby! Sea dog's powering. She's just powering through. Oh, look at that current, look at that. Oh. There you go, first splash of water. Oh, this current just here, it's crazy. The wind's just dropped off, can't believe it. Well, we might be in the lee. We're in the lee of the land, so... Look how messy that is. Doesn't know what it's doing. It's like a washing machine. There we go, we just got through that bit of mess there. And we're back on track. Our aim was to bring Sea Dog around the bottom of Bruni, but I knew that I had to choose the weather correctly. Yesterday and today have been conducive. Tomorrow, I'm not so sure. We'll see what happens when we wake up. Okay, they got a bit hairy back there. Probably should have reefed a little bit earlier, but now the wind's dropped off. It just picked up as I was going through. So I might shake that reef out now and continue heading down towards Cape Bruni. There's the lighthouse, Cape Bruni lighthouse. And over here, through there, that's Cloudy Bay. And to the right of the screen is Cloudy Corner. There's the fries in the distance. We're just about to enter the Don Tricasto Channel. This is Hotwood Point. Uh, the pineapple rocks are through here. There's Cape Bruni, Bruni Lighthouse. Southeast Cape down there. South Port's through there. Research Bay's down there. And the wind has been perfect for the whole trip. Touch wood. According to my dumb watch, we've been at sea for six, six hours, 36 minutes. And we've covered 20, almost 26 nautical miles. Now look at the, the maximum speed was 7.1 knots. I think I know where that happened. That was down around the fryers there for a minute. It got a little bit hairy. But I will put all of those stats up at the end of the video so you can have a look. Stats for nerds. I think it's interesting. Now just around Hopwood Point, there's Partridge Island and in between Hopwood and this is called the Libidier Peninsula. 
in between the peninsula and Partridge Island, there's Partridge Narrows. And just inside Partridge Narrows, there's a fantastic little beach, which I'm hoping that we can put the anchor down for the night. These are the pineapple rocks. Because they look like pineapples. This is Partridge Narrows. One of my favorite places. And there's about three knots of current coming through here at the moment. That's Partridge Island. And that's the beach that we want to get to. Now, unfortunately, I've been listening to the forecast and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. That front's going to be coming through quite early tomorrow and I don't want to be stuck here for the whole day because it's not that protected from that particular wind. So I'm thinking about heading north because the sea breeze has just kicked in, which means it's going to push us back up the channel and uh, we might go into the quarries. leaving Partridge Narrows. I'll be back soon, don't you worry. So we've been sailing north for the last hour and a quarter and the sea breeze is just starting to drop off now and we've had a good run. Knocked off a few more miles. We did uh, four and a half miles. Um, top speed around 4.8 knots. You can see that weather in the west that's what's coming this way not sure that we'll get rain tonight but um, certainly tomorrow afternoon winds due to pick up at around about 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning up to sort of 25 35 knots in the gust so i'm hoping to get up as early as i can and start heading back up the channel to tinderbox to complete our second navigation of bruni island here we're coming into the quarries this is a really good anchorage uh, for keelboat some great little spots to Gunk hole. Love that word, gunk hole. This is the calm before the storm. Here we are at the quarries. We'll spend the night here. We've done uh, 35 nautical miles in nine and a half hours today, which is not a bad effort considering it's such a small boat. I think that's probably on the verge of a small boat, what you can do in a day, unless you're web tiles. I'm not. Um, it's, time. it's time for some tucker. I'm pretty hungry. Um, I'm going to sleep like a hibernating bear tonight, I think. I'll see you in the morning. Coffee time. I think everyone's still asleep. A couple of knots. We're going to need more than this. There's more coming. Oh, I've just been listening to the news and Comanche, who uh, looks like they might win the race, are uh, 20 nautical miles from the finish line, which is what we are. We're 20 nautical miles from Tinderbox. So it's a battle between me and Comanche now. Let's see what time Comanche gets in and let's see what time I get in. At the moment we're doing uh, around four knots. According to my dumb watch, we've done almost a mile. So I've just put a reef in. 
as the wind is picking up, you can see from the, down the south, it's, it's looking quite ominous. Still doing five and a half knots. Should be back at Tinderbox for, by lunch. Probably blowing up to 15 knots now. And we're doing just over six knots. There you go. Just hit our maximum, 6.3 knots. We've only used about two liters of fuel this whole trip. So <laughs> we've done a lot of sailing in the last three days. <laughs> about one and a half miles to Tinderbox. And then we've finished our circumnavigation of Bruny Island. Well done, Sea Dog. Well done, John Wellsford. Another great design. Well done also to Josh Colvin at Small Craft Advisor magazine, who collaborated with John Wellsford on the design of this boat. Well done also to Gig Harbour, who built this boat. Not much room for error in here. Let's see if we can do this. Should have enough just to get me back in here. G'day. How's it going? <laughs> That's a ripper of a boat. Thanks, mate. Very nice. Coming on here? Yeah. Thank you. We did it. We all done. Well, we just made it, I think. I can feel it's coming in now. There she is. The mighty sea dog. I think my car's still there. Let's get her on the trailer. Hope you've enjoyed episode six of Small Craft Tasmania taking Sea Dog the Scamp around Bruny Island. It's been a trip that I wanted to do for a little while. I've been around there a few times in bigger boats, but uh, I've always wanted to do it in a small boat. I was just waiting for the right small boat to come along. I've had the Scamp now for 18 months and it's still impressing me. It's got an enormous amount of storage space on board. I could easily go away for months. As Howard Rice will tell you, it's, it's um, more than capable of going places that most dinghies this size wouldn't. In fact, I'm not sure that I would take some of the 16 foot, um, let alone dinghies, trailer sailors around the bottom of Bruny Island. I think the question is, look at this, sun's just coming up. I think the question is when you've got a small boat, if you do capsize, can you right it and can you get back in it and can you sail off quickly enough? And I think John Wilson's hit the nail on the head with the scam. Uh, it's it's a very difficult boat to capsize. I've, I've done capsize tests in Sea Dog uh, many times. We've capsized her probably about 20 times in all different conditions. And uh, although it's difficult to capsize, it's very, very easy to get back into. It writes almost itself very quickly. And you can sail away within a couple of minutes, literally a couple of minutes. And uh, if your boat's been designed properly, I know some of the plywood boats don't have self-draining cockpits, but the, the Gig Harbour ones actually have a self-draining cockpit. So you can actually sail away and the water will just run out the, the bottom like a, a racing dinghy, um, which is really important. There's um, a lot of boats out there that uh, when you capsize, you're spending, you can spend 20, 30 minutes taking the water out. The, the, the scamp's not like that at all. Um, you can get back in and sail away. The water just runs out the back. Do you need something bigger? Well, I like to push the limits with, with size and, and uh, I like the fact that the scamp is less than 12 feet, but she feels a lot bigger. Uh, in fact, there's more room in this cockpit than some of the 20, 25 footers that I've sailed. The lug rig is perfect for this boat. Uh, I really enjoy sailing lug rig. It's probably one of my favorite rigs just so simple, easy to reef, easy to set, and uh, in, in most conditions it, it, it performs very well. The scamp points surprisingly well as well. 
Um, looking at it, you'd think that it, it wouldn't, but uh, <laughs> John Wellsford's done a fabulous job with the design of the hull. It just works. Everything just works on this boat. The only thing that I might add to the scam would be a mizzen. I, I do like a mizzen sail. It's, it's a very handy sail. You know, why mess with something that's perfect? <laughs> so, to summarise, almost 80 nautical miles, three days, perfect weather conditions. Ugh, my arm's getting sore. So make sure you subscribe to Small Craft Tasmania. We've got lots more content coming up. Lots more boats to try out. We've got the launching of Michael's Long Steps very, very soon, he assures me. Uh, we're still yet to catch up with Ben to have a look at his highly modified mirror dinghy. I'm going to take my trimaran on a high performance cruise. I'll also be posting a video shortly of a trip that Joe and I did a couple of years ago around to Wineglass Bay in Elixir. Thanks very much for watching. Stay salty.